So, our party had decided, after defeating that dragon, uh, no, we, we defeated the dragon, then we went to the town and we got the nameless gnome, uh, and we convinced her parents uh, that she should go to art college. Um, there was a vote of whether to take her to Clinker College, which is a nameless college, or take her to the best art college in, yeah. in, in the Gnome Lands, which is uh, in one of the wings. Right. And it just, it, it, it was, it barely won out that they were going to take her to the Gnome College mainly because that's what she wanted. Yeah. And Serendipity was very torn. She wasn't... She didn't want to go, but she also wanted to go. It was, it was all very... She had some issues. There Although, was something going on. Yeah, it's interesting because in character she was trying to hide that she didn't want to go, but yeah. she didn't want to go. Yeah. So. So we ended up going. Uh, and it was just a one day trip because we've got super eagles. Um, you know, we've got that ritual that speeds everything up. Uh, so we got there real quick and easy. Um, and we landed in the way in. And uh, how did this go then? We, we went to... You arrived to... in the evening because it did yeah, take all day to get there. It was, you flew, I think, like 500 kilometers or something? Yeah. Long distance. Yeah, it was, it was a good long trip. Um, and so we went to try and find a place to stay. Uh, an, uh, an inn or something. Now all these weigh-ins, they're like tents and stuff. They, they travel around. But some of them are really nice tents. Like proper buildings almost. Uh, so we went to this one place that was a, an inn. Um, now, I remember that one didn't go so well. Yeah, I Yes, the, the, the innkeeper was all very dismissive of us, of course. Was Most, there a floor plan? A bunch of us weren't gnomes, even, for starters. Yeah, didn't have good names. Um, and and um, so Cricket, of course, got very incensed at him to make sure that he spoke the names properly and all that, because it's proper thing. Um, and Hank started trying to discuss with him, like, because he was being so rude to us, and Hank's like, you know, I've spent quite a bit of time working in an inn. Mm. I, you know, maybe you need to be really nice to your customers. It's important for bringing up, bringing yeah. up business. And, and he's like, I don't I don't need to be nice to worthless idiots yeah. like yourself. It's irrelevant. And yeah. it was really rude. And and serendipity, I don't remember what she said, but she had some cutting remark. Very like, cutting well, remark, yes. We wouldn't have stayed in this inn anyway. It's, yeah. it's terrible. It's well, it was was, wasn't this one of his name parts like the hospitable or something? Well, she said that, and then yeah. everyone's... It was just a, a great remark. Yeah. Everyone starts laughing at him like... <laughs> ah. <laughs> yeah, so innkeeper extraordinaire. Yeah, right. <laughs> and then, he, you know, he and they just started calling him by his name. So he lost his innkeeper extraordinaire off that was his, it. It was off his innkeeper extraordinaire off his name as the, as they left, yeah. and he was like, "You you've got to watch your backs now." Yeah. They're leaving the, the yeah. Inn. So we partially unnamed a gnome the very first thing we did in there. Welcome to the gnome land. Call everyone <laughs> yeah. Bob. Well, you know these people are awful people. Yeah. They're really awful people, and so. We were awful to them right back. Yeah. And they deserved every bit of it. Yeah. It was great. Um, yeah. So they heard, they heard, they were, the reason they were even in this inn is they were street wising up a good inn. Yeah. And they heard about a really good inn. Uh, and when, and Serendipity Van Goldstrand Moore, Slayer of the Butcher of Brackenridge, Top Lord of Towers, and uh, Shepherd of Souls, mentioned her name to someone. They said that, um, ooh, there's an inn that, you know, they'll only let you in if you've got five or more names. Or, yeah. And, and it's super nice, you know, you should go there. Yeah. And so they go there. <clears throat> and and the bouncer true. at the front, it's like, I I'm sorry, uh, we only let people in with uh, sufficient names. And and she, she said, oh, well, my name is Serendipity Van Goldstrand Malore, Slayer of the Butcher of Brackenridge, Toppler of Towers, and Shepherd of Souls. I'm pretty sure I should be able to enter. And the bouncer's like, I'll be right back. <laughs> <laughs> mm. And the innkeeper comes out and personally greets them mm -hmm. and says, you know, Welcome to my inn. Your friends can stay here, uh, and normally their charge is like fifty gold a night. But for you, it's only a copper a night, and which yeah. is which is really the re the real yeah. cost of an inn. It's just you know, but uh, it's fifty copper for anyone I don't want to actually be here. Um, and uh, uh, he wants her to sign his guest book. <laughs> oh so, my! Yes. Oh yes. So she uses an Arcana check. To magic up her signing of it, and you, did Cricket help? Uh, Cricket helped. 
and um, so they like wrote this fancy this fancy signature that like, like the parts the like transformed into calligraphy. scenes of her slaying the butcher yeah. of Brackenridge and all the yeah. things that she did and it was so awesome and the, and the in here was, was like oh and the, and of course the nameless gnome was with her helped her with the art because she's a yeah. good artist right yeah and so the proprietor asked can I frame this yeah, yeah. you know I want to put this I want to put this up on the wall yeah, and you like, can stay here for free yeah. and, well, this and they usually have yeah. the like Famous people, signatures, yeah. Yeah. being, yeah, kind of fawning on serendipity, and yeah. then, then e- or it was already evening. They yeah. ha- they had their food, and they decided to, um, actually, the innkeeper asked them to tell serendipity's exploits, mm. how she got her name. So, cricket you know, barded it up. Yeah, <laughs> crickets, crickets with crickets barding, and Aurora was standing yeah. there, shining and cheering people on, and they yeah. they did this amazing, amazing performance of serendipity's name and this huge crowd gathered and everyone was just enchanted with the the epic nature of uh of, of serendipity and everyone was yeah quite quite amazed uh, amazed at her and sort of fawning on her yeah so the next i think the, the night went uneventfully night was uneventful as far as we knew uh, yeah they i guess i can mention this now there was I forgot it till later, but um, after they were sort of when they were sort of checking out, the the innkeeper was like, "Yeah, and just so you know, three assassins came in the night, but we killed them." <laughs> yeah, the other the other innkeeper sent assassins. <laughs> after yeah, us. they said, "Oh, can we check the bodies?" He's like, "Well, no, they're over at that other inn. We dumped them in their common room." <laughs> <laughs> We send them back. So because yeah. they did such a good job and all this yeah. other stuff, they just wrote yeah. off the estate. Yeah, yeah. I mean, and they, it's a nice yeah. inn and they protect their people. Yeah, and they, so it's part of their services, assassin proofing the place. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Any male or dead assassins? So <laughs> scratch uh, your back with a knife. Yeah. Uh. So we we were like the talk of the town, or yeah. weigh in uh, mm-hmm. the next morning. Yeah, so uh, uh, I forget who. Oh, who got up first? Cricket and Cricket and, and Hanks. No, Croesus. Croesus. Yeah, Croesus had a bad, had a bad, bad he dread rolled, dream he and, he and had woke a bad up. dream. Yeah. So they got up together. Yeah, and they were met by this, these, two, these two, um, oh, yes. girls and a guy. Although they were actually like almost thirty, but yeah. you know they were like, oh, can we have your autograph? You're one of Serendipi- Serendipity's um, sidekicks, right? Can I get your autograph? So. They they wanted everyone in the party's autograph because they're serendipity sidekicks. Yeah. yeah. And I love that like serendipity was like pulled into the party like sure you could tag along and yeah. now the party is her sidekicks. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah, well, we're in Nomish land, so yeah. we're inherently less important than she is. So. Yeah, and they yeah so they wanted everyone to sort of yeah. sign around the outside and then so serendipity could sign in the middle and they could yeah. sort of collect the whole set of her henchmen. Yeah. Or her uh, sidekicks. <laughs> oh, you could be collectible cards. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, we had some fun playing around with them for a bit. Um, oh yes, one of them. One of them. Um, uh, when Croesus went to sign, uh, one of them was kind of dismissive of Croesus, I believe. Yeah. She, exactly. And then and then Cricket was was you know put her roof down was just like you know you, you're you're being disrespectful to one of. You know the, the the you know basically dressed her down, and then her other two companions were like, "Oh no, she she's not with us." Yeah, wh- whoever she was. Yeah, whatever her name you know, was. I, it doesn't, I don't know doesn't who matter. she is. She just followed us in here. <laughs> and she's like, "But guys, but guys." Oh. Yeah, I thought we were friends. And, uh, and it's like, yeah, whatever. Completely ignored her. So she sort of, unnamed and known. So she started fantastic. weeping in the corner. Now. You, you don't get no name quite so easily. Oh, so yeah. She must have been right on the cusp, but still. Yeah. So she was just <laughs> weeping in the corner while they're continuing to be like, oh, serendipity's sidekick. The fan girl lost. I was not expecting Cricket to be able to unname a gnome like that. But that was fantastic. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. So she's crying in the in the corner, and eventually the bouncer just comes and tosses her out on <laughs> yes. the street. Because her friends wouldn't acknowledge her anymore. That was kind of cruel. Well, what was these gnomes? They, 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 they. This is one of the ways. Fangirling. This is one of the ways uh, that um, enslaves Pona. They hold slaves. Oh. Yeah, and it wasn't really Cricket's Cricket's fault. Like they, she just complained that they, yeah. she was rude, and and they they 
yeah. dismissed her. And mm. even same with the innkeeper, right? Like the yeah. gnomes are the ones doing oh, that. Oh yeah, game, right. Yeah. Yeah. It's just that their actions kind of yeah. led to. Could, could it, it became clear that you, you know you, you just got to be careful because even if you're not being awful, like the slightest thing can cause a social yeah. you know, kind of twist and. Yeah. Cricket was merely being very insistent on proper respect being paid to her party members. Right. Uh, because this is a very respect-oriented culture, she, right. she realizes this is important, and so she's on that. Uh, so, anyway, um, eventually, uh, eventually um, Aurora and who else? Aurora and Hank. I yeah, believe, they, everyone they get up. Hank kind of messed with them for a while. Oh yeah, he, H- Hank loved messing with them. With the gnomes? Yeah, with gnomes. And he just he just messes with gnomes. He's and, always taunting them and 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 sort of like sort of you know sort of toying with them and saying you know I, I well at first he was saying he had multiple names because he has the the flash chart thing flash chart thing yeah and was debating whether he was going to sign it and <laughs> in fact the only reason he didn't go further is because after observing like if you're if you're too mean to them like. They can, you know, they'll, they'll, you. They'll, it could, or or the things can escalate and they'll end up getting yeah. unnamed or they'll ruin their whole lives just because you were a jerk to them once. So yeah. he was, he was like, he kind of reined himself in uh, from. Yeah. Well, you almost got assassinated because yeah. you unnamed someone. Yeah, partially unnamed. Yeah, Cricket had fewer compunctions about you know, sticking it to these people. Yeah, flavors. Yeah. Slaver, disrespectful slavers, the worst kind. Anyway, uh, so I think it was Aurora and Hank that ended up going out into the, the streets to find opponent to talk to. Yeah, Aurora wanted to talk to opponent. Yeah, and so they eventually found this this morose opponent that was tied up somewhere, uh-huh. and uh, you know they talked to him, and he was all very depressed and like I'm worthless, and why are you talking? I'm not well, he wouldn't even talk yeah, to because he was scared of getting to, beaten. I'm not supposed to talk to people and stuff like that. And they, um, they keep trying to talk to him, and eventually his owner comes over yeah. and says, you know, what, what are you doing with my pony? And, and then they're all, like, super angry at the owner and insisting that they're going to buy him from there. It's like, yeah, you, you suck, I'm going to buy him. You know, well, yeah, stuff it, like that. It was, yeah, it's like, it was gonna, very I, weird. It yeah, was, I'm going to buy this pony, I want, I, I want this pony, and, yeah. and the gnome sort of turns on his, his sort of cruel charms, like, look, let me give you some tips. When you want to buy a po- po- someone's pony, you don't start with, I'm going to buy it. You say, look at this worthless sack of bones. Who would ever want to buy this useless old sack of bones? And so they promptly pounced on that and said, oh, it's worthless to you, huh? Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's, yeah. And, but he mocked them for their terrible bargaining. And, and But he eventually said something like, something like, oh, for this worthless sack of bones, why don't you take it? Or some, yeah. some, some kind of like bargaining thing. Yeah. He was just mocking them for not understanding yeah. how to do bargaining. And so they were going to just take and it. And so they're like, oh, he said, just take it. They start untying it <laughs> and walking away with it. And, and he was like, what are you doing? He said he was worthless and that we should just take him. He said, it's a, yeah. they said. So, and, yeah. And so, and so he yeah, says, all was, right, you can take him, but I'm sending, he's worth a thousand gold and I'm sending the bill to, because uh, they said we're, yeah. we're, we're, we're part of Serendip, we're Serendipity Van Gold, Serendip, uh, her sidekicks. Yeah. And so I'm sending the bill to her. And so oh. they walk away with this pony without really negotiating, <laughs> and he's like, I'm sending a bill for an arbitrary amount of gold. Uh, no, didn't they eventually they haggle him down a little bit from a thousand? No. Wasn't it? No? They, okay. just, they just walked away yeah. with the pony, and he said, I'm sending you a bill. <laughs> yeah. This is why you don't let Aurora and Hank wander off together, because. Yeah. This is actually this is why you don't let anyone go out of the civilization of cricket. <laughs> yeah. Meanwhile, Serendipity had gotten up. <laughs> She's the adult of the party. <laughs> Serendipity had gotten up, and she uh, came down in the 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 fan girl. Well, the it's actually a fan girl and a fan guy because the yeah. other one had gotten kicked out. Yeah. Were you know fawning on her, wanting to get her signature, and she she said, I I don't have time for this right now. I'm gonna have breakfast first. And the bouncer comes and says, are these people bothering you? I can have them tossed out. And she says, no, they can wait in the foyer. So <laughs> they toss them out into the foyer. But after breakfast, after letting them twist in a wind for a while, Serendipity does eventually sign their yeah. autograph because, you know, it, it, helps, it helps boost her fame. But, you know, you don't want to be too quick. you got to let them stew a bit. Yeah. 
make her make autograph worse so like and she goes outside where everyone's discussing with this pony. Yeah. <laughs> and they say, no, okay, we're setting you free. Where are you going to go? I don't know. <laughs> where is a worthless old sack bones like me going to go? Game obvious over the years, he's had the fact that he's worthless and yeah. this useless old sack of bones drilled into him. He's, he's lime green. Mm -hmm. And... Um, that is exactly what I imagined it to be. Well, having no description. Cricket, Cricket re recommended that he go to the Empire of Endless Flowers. Of course. Mm -hmm. To the Temple of Freedom. Or yeah. did you no, well, she actually suggested the uh, the Rainbow Bridge. Mm. But you can get there via the Empire of Endless Flowers. He thought that that was a myth because the gnomes all told him, you know, that's a... There's no Rainbow Bridge. There's no Rainbow Bridge. There's no place yeah. where... Conan. No silicon heaven. <laughs> it's called the road. It's called the Rainbow Road. Anyway, um, so yeah, we told them that the gnomes are lying, lying liar heads, and there totally is a rainbow bridge. We started to think maybe that was an option, and they did some diplomatizing on him. And Rose said he should go to the Grey Wall and help close the world's wound. Mm -hmm. And because he was really depressed and. You know, basically said he's he's worthless because that's all he's ever heard his whole life. And Gross has said, "Well, you can prove your worth at you know at, at the Gray Wall because that's the most worthwhile thing ever, closing the world's wound." So, and I think that's what he decided to do: go do that for a while and see if what they were all saying was right that he wasn't worthless. Because they kind of started to convince him that maybe he's not worthless, but it doesn't seem all that likely. We better test it out. Maybe it's true. So he's going to go test that out in, yeah. in Greywall, and then if that works out, maybe he'll find out about this Rainbow Bridge business. So we gave him a giant eagle and sent him on his way. We put a pony on a giant eagle and sent it off. It was great. Does it actually look like a giant pony, like from the show? Oh, yeah. So anyway, um, after that, we had to go and drop off the Nameless Gnome at the, the college and get her enrolled and stuff. So Serendipity bought the um, the ceremonial um, shackles and mask that Gnomish children wear as like a sign of her adopting her. Mm -hmm. um, and brought her up to the college. And I think when she, it was when she was introducing her to, like, the, as they're walking through the street, mm -hmm. people are saying, Oh, it's Serendipity of Ben Goldstrider, Malor, Slayer of the Butcher of Brackenridge, Toppler of Towers, and Shepherd of Souls. It's so nice to see you. Because her, her fame had spread through this whole way yeah. because of her epic exploits and landing on the eagles. And, you know, people in the street are saying hello. And the, the, the principal of the college comes out to personally greet her. Mm -hmm. um, and actually, I don't have it um, written down, but that was where she said, Let me introduce yeah. you to uh, my ward. And gave her a, a name, which I unfortunately don't remember. Yeah. <laughs> so Serendipity named the nameless gnome. Mm -hmm. And then they went into a three-hour interview slash portfolio going through thing with the principal. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The party kept trying to help, even though they probably shouldn't have been. <laughs> like, her interview, and they're all like... Aurora's like, yeah, I'm going to stand behind her and shine. I'm sure that'll help. <laughs> Oh, this is creepy. <laughs> well, Serendipity wanted it to be a private interview because yeah. that's appropriate. Yeah, and the whole party was just piling in there to try and get involved. <laughs> Fortunately, we didn't screw anything up for her. <laughs> but Serendipity didn't make that great of a diplomacy check because yeah. it's not her strong suit. So in the end, you know, Serendipity's name means a lot, especially if she's giving donations to the school and patronizing it. Mm. And the girl's actually quite talented at art. So in the end, they say, you know, she's good enough to get in, but it's not like we're going to let her in for free because, you know, that she's not getting a scholarship. So um, the uh, tuition fees, I think they were... It was like a thousand a year or something. I think, it's a, I think it was a thousand a term, three thousand a year or something. I forget. No, I, I it's written down. I think but. it worked out to about a thousand a year or something like that. No, maybe you're right, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, right. It was... Yeah. I think it was... It was 400 a term, and there's three terms a year. Yeah. And so, it's going to be expensive to put this girl through college. Considering you can stay at an inn for a copper? 
Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, that's it's sort of a dichotomy of uh, rich versus poor, I guess. Yeah. But we're adventurers. We're rich. So we get her in. We pay her tuition for a year uh, in advance. And um, then we're done with whatever we were going to do here in this so land. So we set her up in her, her school and they're leaving and so Therapy says, okay, yeah, so we, we got to get out of here. We let's get out of here. Let's right summon, now. summon eagles. And this gnome gentleman walks up to her and says, hello, serendipity of Engold, Shroud of Malor, Slayer of the Butcher of Brackenridge, Toppler of Towers, and Shepherd of Souls. My illustrious master, Parishwimmer der Anderstock, El Miriam, El En Terim, Ex Zanibra, Don Ligar Wen Tarok, Har Karaba, Den Der, sorry, Dar Seria, and Susan. El Tomasonia Can Elzenar Gold Sweller, Settler of Debts, Rich Beyond Counting, Retriever of the Irretrievable, Zombie Slayer, The Untouchable, The Unfindable, Finder of the Unfindable, Wine Taster of the Decade, Master Flautist, Silver Teeth, Deceiver of Elves, Paragon of Virility, Champion Sportsman, Possessor of Beauty Beyond That Which Mortals Can Comprehend, Loins of Fury, Beloved of the Court, The Sly, Crusher of Hopes, Goblin Slayer, Freer of Ponin, Caster of the Seven Winds, Entrusted with the Sacred Heart of Geneva El Peren, Jewel Maker to the Duchess, Nice Abs, Never Lost a Bet, Climber of Mountains, Whose Love Women of All Races Desperately Seek, The, the Two-Faced, The Well-Dressed One, Gossip Extraordinaire, With the Irresistible Smile, Cruel Whitmaster, Wild Card, The Cleverest, With Eyes That Kill, <laughs> Master of Ballroom, Indomitable, loveliest in the wane, sexy legs, knower of secrets, debate champion, captain, collector of rarities, dancer, the merciless. I would like a word with you. <laughs> <laughs> would you would you like to go somewhere private? And <laughs> serendipity was just sort of blinking uh, wide-eyed and mm. I, I don't think it was in character, but uh, Tim Tim leaned over and was like, you just got outnamed. <laughs> <laughs> so there's this guy. How and many Serendipity is obviously guys? really freaked out by this guy. Count. He's got a lot. So, lines of fury. <laughs> <laughs> Though it occurs to me. One of his names is with the irresistible smile. You never see a gnome smile. They're all veiled. How did you just someone, have to trust. How did someone get that name? Weird. Anyway. Convincing enough people. Very convincing. So yeah, there's this guy with curious loins. Well, so they... So... She, certainly kind of is sort of speechless for a while, but eventually she ag agrees to sheepishly go to some private meeting room at some random inn, and and she doesn't want everyone coming with her, but she lets Cricket come with her. Everyone else just waits outside. I don't count. I'm like a secretary. Yeah. <coughs> um, and, um, and it's handy that I have a super high bluff in diplomacy as well. <laughs> don't mind the help. Yeah. So he... He takes her into the room and um, um, uh, and says, "Well, so um, my illustrious master, <laughs> but I have my own." Erm Schwar der Anderstock, El Miriam, Antirim, Ex Zanibra, Don Lagar, Wentero, Perkaraba, uh, Dar Seria, and Susan, El Thomas Thomasonia. Then Elzenar Goldsweller, Settler of Debts, Rich Beyond Counting, Retrieve the Irretrievable, Zombie Slayer, No, give me that! No! No! No, I need your copy, John. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> his master, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> I was at Zombie Slayer. Okay. The Untouchable, the Unfindable, Fire of the Unfindable, Sword of the Decade, Master Cloud of Silver Teeth, Deceiver Bell, Paragon of Virility, Champion Sportsman, Possessor of Beauty Beyond Which Mortals Can Comprehend, Loins of Fury, Beloved the Court, The Sly, Crusher of Hopes, Goblin Slayer, Fear of Women, oh, Caster of Seven Winds, Trusted with the Sacred Heart of Geneva oh, yeah. El Jewel Maker of Duchess, Nice Abs, Never Lost the Bet, Climber of Mountains, is Love Luminous Scene, 
The Who's Love Woman of All Races Definitely Seek, The Two-Face, The Well-Dressed One, The Gossip Extraordinaire, With The Irresistible Smile, Cruel Whipmaster, Wild Card, The Cleverest, With Isaac Hill, Master of Ballroom, yeah. Indomitable, lo Loveliest of the Wings, Sexy Ladies, No Horror no Secrets, Debate Champion, Captain, Collector of Rarities, Dancer, The Merciless. I just found out that you owe quite a few debts, and he has purchased all of your debts. He opens this, this folder partway. As you can see, they're quite considerable. Closes the folder. Um, and he would like to um, settle his debts with you. You see, we wouldn't want the unthinkable to happen should this information become public knowledge. Mm. And my master is a reasonable man, and he's somewhat of a collector. Perhaps rather than losing everything, we could perhaps deal. He's quite partial to um, Slayer of Butcher of Bracken Ridge, for example, or perhaps Toppler of Towers. Those, those would be excellent, excellent names to um, add to his own illustrious title. And Serendipity. Yeah. Well, Serendipity and Shannon were just it completely was, like, ah, ah. Yeah, it's ah, hard to tell exactly. She was having a big breakdown right there because yeah. she, she wasn't expecting comeuppance. You know. She she never who, actually told anyone why she has so many debts. Who would have thought that her debts would come back to haunt her like that? Not her. I won't say why she has debts, but during her back her character backstory involves a lot of debts. She has yeah. a bunch of not like not owned to one person, but a bunch of debts that she's that she owes and that's from her backstory. Yeah. And so this guy oops, I maybe we should <laughs> wait, let's not say his name again. <laughs> okay. okay. Well, <laughs> it's not necessary. But anyway that, that guy quite kindly went around and gathered up, consolidated all of her debts for her. He bought them all up himself. Yeah, debt consolidated. Consolidated them and was offering to settle them all in one fell swoop yeah. for the mere pittance of two of her names. <laughs> and so serendipity, serendipity, serendipity was like choking on rage and aghastness at this point. Yeah, she, and it was sort of hard to exactly tell. I couldn't really tell if Shannon was upset or not, but Serendipity yeah. was certainly upset. It was I, I, Shannon of... was Shannon was annoyed with Serendipity. <laughs> yeah, Shannon, Shannon was like, was so upset at Serendipity. Serendipity, what were you doing? How could you get so many debts? Yeah. Um, they did. He was trying to keep the folder close to his close to it, not show what's in it, right? Because it's a it's a, all a power game. I mean, he I was he was yeah. just a just being a sleazy, slimy jerk, right? Yeah. And it's just totally a power game. In fact, I was, I, I, I took inspiration from the scene from The Matrix where they are interrogating him and they're like, he opens the folder and it's like, oh, you've been up to some bad things. And he leans over to see it and he closes the yeah. folder. Yeah. It's just, that sort of was my inspiration. But they, but Cricket made an amazing diplomacy check. And so, even though it wasn't really in his best interest to show the folder, he, there was some value to showing the folder too because Otherwise, we probably wouldn't have believed the extent of the, the right. Debt. But uh, yeah, the what I, what I, what probably would have been in best interest is not show you. But like the thing is, he has it. He has it on serendipity because if she walks, he can, they can they can unname her. Like it's yeah. it's bad, right? Yeah. And so he has all the power, yeah. and so she is. He can be as much of a jerk and not show. She just doesn't know, and it's almost more terrifying not knowing. But high diplomacy was made, so he showed yeah. her. And uh, yeah, she owes hundreds of, of thousands of gold to this guy. And some of the charges might, may or may not be overblown, but they're not like completely out there. And even if they are overblown, she'd have to take it to public court to, um, they should have to take it to public court in order to contest it. And that's the last thing she wants, right? This guy is sort of thriving on this backroom blackmail dealing, right? So she asked if she can have a few minutes to think about it. And she's completely breaking down. But Cricket holds it together. She's actually had some experience with this kind of thing. She used to keep the keep the books for her, her old family, who were minor nobility. So this sort of thing actually is, you know, within her experience. Don't so worry, some, some I'm degree. an accountant. Essentially, yes. And so, um, 
you know, so she's, she's like, uh, like that, and Cricket's like, shh, shh, of course, without actually, shh, like that. and saying, okay, we got to make a deal. Let's consider some counter offers that we could give. Yeah. And her friends all started chipping uh, in too, because like, you know, Rose not, is like, well, it's just a name, yeah, whatever. Yeah, her friends just were give not it up now. All your all. now, and all your debts are settled, and all you did was lose two titles off your name. <laughs> What's the problem? That's obvious. Yeah. Yeah. And Cross is very insistent she had to pay her debts. Actually, the first thing Serendipity said uh, was, "Can we just kill him? Can we just find him, the person who owes the debts, and kill him?" Um, and Cricket was totally like, "Assassin? <laughs> you know, I have a, a cross-class assassin." <laughs> but Cross is kind of really the rest of the party. It's like, yeah. well, the, they're. I mean, this guy's kind of being they're, a sleaze, but they're valid debts. They're valid debts, <laughs> right? I just kill someone because you yeah. owe money. Um, the other thing... There was some discussion, though, that... Also, like, you can unname gnomes, but you don't normally steal their names. Like, this is this is underhanded. I mean, it's the kind of thing you'd expect from a gnome, but it wouldn't be acceptable in polite gnomish society, but mm-hmm. it's, not, it's not done. Now we know why this gnome has so many names. Mm. Yeah. His, his servant did say he has a way of... Collecting names. He's basically like an IP baron. Well, one of his names is Settler of Debts, so he probably earned that one himself. Well, as also he has the name in there, um, the Unfindable, and finder, and finder of, of the Unfindable. Yeah. <laughs> well played. Yeah. Well played. Yeah. But of course, everyone focuses on Loins of Fury. Well, actually, so far just you. I'm everyone. Anyway. I thought sexy like <laughs> Nice abs, I'll close it. Not, not great abs, just nice abs. <laughs> anyway, so, yeah, most of the party is not very helpful in their suggestions, mostly falling down to just take whatever deal he wants because it's just a name, who cares? Yeah, and They're completely to be- insensitive to gnomish culture and sensitivities and... Serendipity yeah. is totally breaking down, and Shannon's playing it well. And yeah. I don't know, I couldn't even tell if Shannon was breaking down yeah. or not. But my cricket did her best to to be the voice of reason, as always, and and was like, okay, so what are some actual deals we could make to try and, and alleviate the pain of this thing that this offer is making? And so we came up with a couple of possibilities. Um, we try and bargain them down. To just Slayer the Butcher of Rack and Rich. Uh, but that doesn't fly just as a straight bargain down because we got no, nothing to, to he, offer. You know, we, he holds the cards on this one. When he, when they do, I'll just jump ahead to that. When they pitch that yeah. to him, he says, Well, my master could take Slayer of the Butcher of Rack and Rich, but you'd also need something lesser. Like, for example, maybe Ven Goldstrider Malore. Yeah. I could take that. Uh, that and yeah. Slayer, Butcher, take, Bracken, Ridge. family name. <laughs> which just horrified Serendipity just because it's just so inappropriate. Yeah. And that also explains why he has so many family names. Yeah. That's one of the first things she asks is, why does he have so many family names? Yeah. They're like ears on his belt. Um, so yeah, that really wasn't going anywhere. So, um, I think we haggled a little bit more, but it was clear that this guy was not going to go down because he held all the cards. We didn't really get into the bargain with So we decided to be a little underhanded. This was when um, Serendipity, Ben Gold, Sword of Moore, Soul, the Witcher, Rack, Rage, Top of the Towers, Shepherd of Souls, cast Charm Person. I guess, is it still called Charm Person? It's a ritual or something. So. Yeah. And turned this guy into her best friend. So that gave us a bit of a leg up in the negotiations. Not, yeah. a, not a huge one because he still negotiated on behalf of his master. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, actually, okay. this guy's name. This it. guy's name is. Uh, he actually called that out because his, yeah. his name is Voon Trusty Servant, and he commented that once he was friends with Serendipity. He commented that his master was really clever, right? Because if he ever proves himself untrustworthy, he can be unnamed, yeah. <laughs> because that's his primary his name, right? Yeah. And so he, you know, the main thing that happened, and also gnomes can be jerks to their best friends anyway. But yeah. the main thing that happened was. Um, he started kind of being on their side and commiserating with them, but he still has to yeah. present a deal that won't get him unnamed. But like now that's, 
we could actually get through him. You know, we, we could actually make some counter offers. And he wasn't doing the power game thing anymore. Yeah. Like, actually, ended up quite different because I plan, I plan on playing him like just a just a cruel, awful jerk. Yeah. But then but then instead he was kind of like the guy who's on your side working for a cruel, awful jerk because yeah. of a charm person. He sits down on your side, Tim. He's like, man, yeah. that's a pickle. <laughs> what are we gonna do? Yeah. <laughs> So ultimately, we got a counter offer through that his boss, first um, <laughs> he, um, um they they kind of give they sell him on the futures market. Yes. They so say, go, okay, we'll give you one name now. Slayer of the Butcher of Brackenbridge. And what was it? A year? In one year's In time. One year's time. He can and I he can take a name, an additional name of his choosing from. Your current name at that whatever, time. Whatever else she's accumulated by then. And cool. actually the guy who was her friend could, was like, hey, another good idea you could do is add on that if you have enough to pay off the debt at that time, you can pay off the debt instead. So that was the contract. Yeah. They sign it. She no longer owes him any money except for she has to abide by this contract. So all the debts are cancelled. He takes Slayer and Butcher of the Bracken Ridge and in one year's time she can either pay him the, the set amount, which is hundreds of thousands of gold, well, half oh, of that now. Oh, half of it. Half of it. Yeah. Or he can take the additional part of her name of his choosing. One one title of his choosing from her name in one year's time. Mm-hmm. And, you know, this was the deal they went for, but Serendipity was not pleased with that outcome either. She no. was really... Well, I mean, obviously <laughs> she wasn't pleased with any outcome except getting everything and giving nothing. Mm-hmm. Um, but that wasn't really an option. It's okay. It gives her a year to have her assassin. Yeah. Yes. So then, so once this deal was all set up, uh, he, the guy said, Thank you for dealing with us, Serendipity of Engold, Strider Malor, Toppler of Towers, and Shepherd of Souls. And thank you for dealing with my master, Parsonware Duranderstock, Elmiriam, and Tarim, and Zeniba, Don Lagar, Wen Taruk, Har Karaba, Dar Seria, Elden Susan, El Tomastonia, Can Elzenar, Gold Sweller. Settler of debts, rich beyond counting, retriever of the irretrievable, <laughs> zombie slayer, the untouchable, the unfindable, finder of the unfindable, wine taster of the decade, master flautist, silver teeth, deceiver of elves, paragon of virility, champion sportsman, possessor of beauty beyond that which mortals can comprehend, loins of fury, beloved of the court, the sly, the crusher of hopes, goblin slayer, freer opponent, caster of the seven winds, Entrusted with the sacred heart of Geneva El Peren, jewel maker to the Duchess. Nice abs, never lost a bet. Climber of mountains, whose love women of all races desperately seek. The two-faced, the well-dressed one, gossip extraordinaire, with the irresistible smile. Cruel witmaster, wild card, the cleverest, with eyes that kill. Master of ballroom, indomitable, loveliest in the wane, sexy legs, knower of secrets, debate champion, captain, collector of rarities, the Dancer, Slayer of the Butcher of Brackenridge, The Merciless. Well, gnomes are terrible. Not Serendipity, Van Shrider, Malor, Toppler of Towers, and Shepherd of Souls, of course. But all of these other gnomes here, this entire way in, they're terrible. All these people are terrible. Ah. For one, they're slayers. That right off the bat. Oh. They need a good conqueror. Um, but of course, the other terrible thing is how they have taken one of Serendipity, Van Goldstrider, Malor, Toppler of Towers, and Shepherd of Souls' names. And, and that's, a, that's a terrible thing. I don't fully understand it, but I'm told it's terrible, and therefore it's terrible. I don't understand why everyone else doesn't understand that it's terrible. Serendipity Van Goldstrad and Malur, Toppler of Towers and Shepherd of Souls said so. But, well, we'll just go with that and, and hopefully, hopefully she can perhaps get it back someday. Or failing that, wreak terrible vengeance on the man who took it from her. Par- Parsimware Der Anderstock, El Miriam and Terim. Zanibra Don Lagar, Wentarok, 
Parakaraba Dar Seria and Susan El Tomistonia, Ken Elzenar Goldsweller, Settler of Debts, Rich Beyond Counting, Retriever of the Irretrievable, Zombie Slayer, The Untouchable, The Unfindable, Finder of the Unfindable, Wine Taster of the Decade, Master Flautist, Silver Teeth, Deceiver of Elves, Paragon of Virility, Champion Sportsman, Possessor of Beauty Beyond That Which Mortals Can Comprehend, Loins of Fury, Beloved of the Court, The Sly, Crusher of Hopes, Goblin Slayer, Freer of Ponin, Caster of the Seven Winds, Entrusted with the Sacred Heart of Geneva El Perrin, Jewel Maker to the Duchess, Nice Abs, Never Lost a Bet, Climber of Mountains, Whose Love Women of All Races Desperately Seek, The Two-Faced, The Well-Dressed One, Gossip Extraordinaire, with the irresistible smile, cruel witmaster, wild card, the cleverest, with eyes that kill, master of the ballroom, indomitable, loveliest and wane, sexy legs, nor of secrets, debate champion, captain, collector of rarities, the dancer, slayer of the butcher of Bracken Ridge, the merciless. That guy sucks. You know, I'm trying to figure out this whole gnome obsession with names thing. It's complete nonsense, in my opinion. Which I'm sure a gnome would probably hang me for saying that, but, or, you know, cut my head off. Actually, yeah, about that, apparently there were some assassins that were going to come kill me in my sleep because an innkeeper was rude to me and I was trying to relate to him on a personal level I've, based on my experience as an innkeeper and he thought I was insulting him because I was bringing his name down or something. It makes no sense. I was just trying to offer him some advice on how to be polite to his customers, but it doesn't matter. Now there's this guy with this, like, five-minute long name, and he totally cheated to get his name. He stole names from other people, which, even for gnome standards, that's idiotic and insane and just outright nasty and apparently he has collected some debts from serendipity van goldstrider malor slayer of the butcher of bracken ridge and toffler of towers and shepherd of souls and yes i'm keeping the slayer of the butcher of bracken ridge in there because that's what she was called at the time when this happened and oh this is just awkward Anyway, he wants to take pieces of her name to add on to his in account for them. I don't even know what this debt is for. It's not really any of my business. Unless, you know, of course, she, if she wants help with it or something, then yeah, I'm there for her. But, like, he wants to take Slayer of the Butcher of Brackenridge out of her name and tack it onto his so he can claim he did this? That's stupid! Like, that doesn't even make sense. Like, so she's gonna be, just be called Serendipity Van Gold Strider, my Lord Toppler Towers, and Shepherd of Souls. But it doesn't even matter. It doesn't take away the fact that she killed the Butcher of Bracken Ridge. And we helped her do it. She still did the act. And the fact that it's written in her name is irrelevant. And I know she would weep at me saying this, but... It's not a big deal. And gnomes are very silly for insisting a silly little name is such an important thing. Names are words to identify people with. If somebody came to me and said, you are no longer called Hank, I'd be like, yeah, I am. And, uh, yeah, how hard is that? So what? Well... I have a name that I'm not using anymore, even though Gretchen was part of my identity. If Serendipity, Van Goldstride, and Malor, Toppler of Towers, and Shepherd of Souls wants it, she can have it. All 
that probably is as nonsensical to gnomish beliefs as everything else is to me. So, I don't know. I just want to get on with our box quest because I know what's in there. It's the codex. I figured it out because I'm a spell blade. We need to bring this thing to Alanway and get rid of it and destroy it and not use it. And I'm getting off track, but I guess that's all I have to say about that. Good night. Stacia? 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 Look, no, it's it's not the same. It's not the same thing. It's not the same thing at all. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not running from a promise. I'm not running from a debt. I'm. It's a dream. You said it was a dream. Stick, Stacia. I know you're in here. You promised. You said it was a dream. You said I would wake up. You said it would just be one night and it would feel longer. And and. And you would you you wouldn't you wouldn't lie you wouldn't lie to me about that because because I trusted you and and I'm not why won't anyone believe that I'm not running from my debts that I'm not running from my problems that it's just a dream and and it's not the same thing at all it's it it isn't I'm I'm not like Saren Sir. I'm not like serendipity va Vander L Lorgan who didn't kill anyone apparently. Um I saw them put the box into this bag and now I can't find it. And you, you are the box, right? I'm not just talking to on Stop lying to me. I'm not why won't anyone believe me that it's not the same thing at all? Dear Diary, Today we learned something new about Serendipity Van Goldstrad and Malora, the, uh, um, not the Slayer, um, the Toppler of Towers. Oh, it's hard now. I just, I can't get the flow anymore. Toppler of Towers. Uh, Cricket, how does it go? Uh, the Toppler Slayer, of Towers. There's no Slayer anymore. No. No. Toppler of Towers. She no longer killed the Butcher of Bracken Ridge. Yeah, but we still did, right? Yes, we, we still did. Okay. So it's we're just that still guy, the Slayer that guy, of the yes. Butcher of Bracken Ridge, and now that this other guy is that also... we've never met helped. Okay. Okay, anyway. Yeah, we found out something totally new about her. Apparently, she used to be quite the spendthrift. She borrowed all this money from all these different people. And what has happened to that money? And she chose not to pay it back, but instead ran away. I was very surprised to hear that about her, and I'm, I must confess, I'm, I'm a little bit disappointed that she chose to do that. It just seems like such a dishonest thing to do. It makes me wonder about her integrity, but clearly she has changed much from those days. I'm sure they were early days, and maybe that's part of, maybe that's part of her new motivation is to try to earn money, was to try to earn money to, to pay those folks back, so... Yeah, she must be feeling so much better now that she's got this horrible weight of debt. Like, relief in sight, and, well, no, she's paid it back now, so, oh, I'm sure she's feeling so much better. Oh, I think she'll be just so much more at peace now, and I'm really happy for her. Today was, like, the best day for her. The best day. It was a good day for me, too. I found a pony who was enslaved, and we helped him get free. What a great day we've all had. You just don't understand. None of you understand. It's, I... It's like... I took my name. And, it, it, and that's, that's part of me. It's essential to a part of me. It's something I... I accomplished. It's part of my history. And... And he's not even, it's not like he just wrote it on the wall of his wagon and unnamed me. It's worse than that. He prof profaned that name by adding it to his own. The fat, lecherous, uh, 
Oh, the sexy legs, whatever that guy's name was. The merciless. He took me.